have a, I think, a, a pretty neat pen to, to talk about. Uh, this is the Aurora Mar Adriatico. And uh, this is a limited edition version of uh, the Aurora Optima. The Optima I've already reviewed, so you can check that out. But this is a, a limited edition version of that pen. Comes in a big box, uh, which I actually like. This is a, a pretty box. <coughs> Out of the oops, cardboard box comes another box, which opens up to reveal the pen, ink, and a booklet. The booklet is not really a booklet, but more of a book. It's a lot of pages, uh, neat, full color, uh, special editions, etc. Made since 1919 in Italy. And it says Edizione Limitata. So it's a limited edition. It also comes with a cute bottle of ink, Aurora Black. According to many people, this is the gold standard of blacks. They really like it, and it's it is indeed a very nice, intense black. The pen had this cute little sort of fake wax seal on it with um, Aurora on it. And um, Let's have a look at the pen. Now I can't show you the Optima because I send uh, I sold the my Optima to a very nice guy, um, but this is the limited edition. Now, guys, it's stunning. Uh, the, the Mar Adriatico, Adriatic Sea. Uh, I'm I'm assuming I don't speak Italian that well, or at all, but beautiful. This is a really nice, intense turquoise pen. Uh, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and uh, then I'll do a writing sample. Okay, now, top of the cap, uh, I just want to hold this the right way around, it has the Aurora logo, which I've always enjoyed. It's, um, I'm just re-grabbing that box. I like this sort of teardrop design. It's pretty neat, and it's on the, the cap too. No highlights or anything, just all chrome. The, the cap, a clip that is stiff but springy enough to use, a center band that says Aurora, made in Italy, uh, and it has cute stuff on it. It's number 447. Currently, right now, I forgot how many of these were made, but it doesn't really matter. It was a limited edition. Uh, and here you can see what else is on there. There's a little beach chair and an inflatable ball with a, a big uh, a parasol. Uh, there is a, a little boat with a lighthouse. It's it's really neat. There's a lot of eye for detail in this pen. Okay, I'm, I'm glad my camera is focusing this closely up so that you can really see how beautiful this material is. A lot of depth to it and indeed when I think of a gorgeous deep blue sea, this is the color I picture. Okay, then you have this, so the barrel, and there is a second band right there, which has more uh, sea-related symbols, so there is oars and anchors, and it's all very nice. This is a piston turning knob, because these pens are piston fillers, so you actually, uh, not, not a cheap pen, but you actually get a piston filler. Now, one of my issues with the Optima model is that it's quite small and fairly light. But, on this pen, you get a metal section. And the advantage of the metal section is that it's really quite heavy, and to be extremely careful, but as you can see, that really balances the pen. So, you have the barrel, you have the ink in there, you have a slightly heavy section, making for a really, really pleasantly balanced pen. I think it's absolutely great. You have a clear ink window. Of course, there's ink in there now, so I don't know how well you can see that, but it is clear. The nib in this case is medium. It's 18 karat gold. It says Aurora, has a whole bunch of scroll work on it, and I'm fairly certain that is an ebonite feed. Nice thing about these pens is that you can unscrew the nib units as you can, for example, with a Pelican pen, making it easy to swap out nibs, which is nice if you want a modular system. The piston operates very smoothly, very pleasantly, and the nice thing about this is that you can see, you can't see it now because there's ink in there, but you can see the uh, part of the feed sticking out a little bit, and the actual piston seal just slides over that, which means the piston seal is hollow, there's a little bit of extra ink, you can squeeze out extra ink, you have a special reservoir, you can look that up, how that works exactly on Aurora's website, but it's a pretty neat system. 
So in all what you have here is definitely not the world's biggest pen, but very well balanced. It's heavier than it looks because of that metal section uh, and you get this great pen. Now if you really want to, it can be posted and then I would say you have a really, really nicely sized pen. Even for people who don't have the world's smallest hands. Nice touch is that the nib, I don't know how you can see that, but it curves down ever so slightly, so it's really nicely aligned with the paper. And whereas uh, Aurora is known for its slightly toothy nibs, I found this to be a very nice, smooth nib. It doesn't really have that tooth, and some people dislike that, but in this case, I really liked it. So, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? It's hard to ignore the looks here. It's, I, I, you never really know if the camera does it justice, but it's such a beautiful, sparkling material they use. It's absolutely stunning. I like that, I like the fact that it's a piston filler, holds a decent amount of ink, it has that, that um, special reservoir to squeeze out a little bit more ink when you're dry otherwise, to, to finish your sentences or whatever. Um, nice screw-on cap. I love that section. It gives such a wonderful balance, and yes, it is metal, so it can get a little slippery. That brings me to things I don't like so much. As always, that's the issue with metal sections of pens. With As you write, you can sweat a little bit. It can rotate a bit in your hands. The nib is smooth. I know it lacks that Aurora tooth. Some people will love that. Some people will hate that. And the big issue, of course, is that this is not a cheap pen. It's expensive. Then again, it's a limited edition. And you know that's how it works in the pen world. They will not be cheap. If you want a much less expensive version by a regular Optima. It will be black and not look as stunning as this, but you will have a very similar pen that's just a bit lighter and will also have a very good nib, I can say from experience. So, I like that a lot. I think that's more than enough talk. I need, I think we need to see this pen in action. That's what I'm going to do next. Before I do that, let's, let me give you a couple of measurements. Uh, the weight of the pen in all is 44 grams, the cap weighs 14 grams, the body 30 grams, cap length is 130.1 millimeters, that's 5.12 inches, uncapped it's 124.7 millimeters, 4.91 inches, posted it's 154.4 millimeters, that's 6.07 inches, section diameter is 10.5, 12.4 millimeters, or 0.41 to 0.48 inches, and the barrel diameter is 10.9 to 13.8, that's 0.42 to 0.54 inches. Okay, hope this was useful so far. See you in the writing sample, and uh, I'm glad to see you later. Bye bye. Alright, so here we go with the very pretty Aurora. Mar Adriatico. The ink is uh, Honoré de Balzac, made by Mont Blanc, and the nib is uh, it's a medium. Very nice, consistent flow. Yeah, you feel a little bit of the Aurora tooth on the diagonal strokes, I think. But overall, a very nice and smooth nib. And a very consistent ink flow. Okay, wetness. Uh, it's not ultra wet, but it's definitely not a dry nib, so it has a very good flow. Line variation, you can squeeze out some, but... Uh, it's not, not a, it's a, a fairly rigid nib. Reverse writing, then you pretty much get an extra fine line out of your medium nib, I would say, is uh, quite feedbacky. Okay, that's it. Hope this was useful, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.